What's going on everybody? Lender here with another PvP video. Uh, today I'm going to go over my PvP build. So I'm doing light healing. Um, it was really tough at first, but I started to get the hang of it, you know, um, and it's uh, it's actually pretty strong. It's actually pretty strong. I, I can tell you, I don't like the changes to healing. I don't like the, um, you know, the, the increased cast time for lights and brace. Uh, lights and brace is definitely a must have, I think, for 3v3 arenas. Um, I don't like the reduction in healing with uh, heavy and, and medium. You know, I, I really enjoy playing those paladin builds every once in a while, or at least, you know, having the option to. Uh, but this is what we have. This is what we have to work with. And I have been busting my ass on the PTR, getting a lot of time in healing. So this is what the video is for. This is my guide on light healing. And I'm going to go over some tips and tricks, you know, the general build, how to play the build, how to survive, and, uh, you know, how to win these arena matches. And it is, let me tell you, tons and tons of fun it's gonna be a blast i cannot wait absolutely cannot wait so uh we're gonna start off with the build and then some gameplay and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video and let me know if you guys have any questions at the end uh let's get right into it all right so we're gonna go over the life staff first so the life staff trees you're you know pretty much standard build not much has changed here the only thing that's really gonna stand out that you guys are gonna notice right off the bat is the splash of light you got it the clap so <laughs> the clap is definitely not good but in arenas it's great i never thought i'd be using this skill but it is really a lifesaver it's going to heal your whole team i mean there's only three of you but still it's going to heal your whole team it's basically my oh crap button so i use it all the time i sometimes swap it out for uh, beacon because beacon is an amazing heal it just doesn't do much healing. And for the amount of damage these guys are putting out, Beacon is not gonna save anybody. But Splash of Light will, especially if they're standing in sacred ground. Remember, anybody in sacred ground is gonna get 50% more healing, um, you know, from all sources. So if they're in sacred ground and sacred ground's a staple for every single life staff build, they're gonna get quite a bit of healing from Splash of Light. Um, now, again, I do swap out Beacon every once in a while, but I always end up going back to Splash of Light. Just try it. You'll you'll like it. All right. So we're going to take Absolved. Um, that's a no-brainer. We're going to also take Blissful Touch because we will be using that for heals when everything's on cooldown. Um, if nothing else, you know you're going to be healing inadvertently when you're attacking enemies and uh, just something I never, ever skip. Of course, we're taking Sacred, all the perks, Splash of Light, all the perks. Uh, this is nice because it removes a debuff. And um, the only other, you know, thing that kind of changes is I'm not taking Intensify because I never use heavy attacks in arenas. They take too long. I'm rolling those light attacks to get that CDR as much as I can. And I just don't have time to hit these heavies, you know. So I skip that and instead put it over here in this tree for uh, Protector Strength. Oh, and Balance, and Balance. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so, you know, we get everything else. These are all self-explanatory. It's basically just all extra healing and extra cooldown reduction. These are all must-haves. Absolutely, absolute must-haves. Sometimes I skip Enchanted Justice if it's a PvE build, but this is great in PvP. Um, basically, you know, you, whenever you get hit, you're going to get a, like a, it's like the Void Gauntlet healing circle thing. It's really nice. So, uh, in the Protector side, we're going to take Ben Light. You're going to be dodging. I mean, you're going to, you better have dodge pretty much on cooldown. So, you're going to constantly have 20% more heals. And then we're going to take Protector's Touch because the uh, light attacks, whenever we're trying to, you know, reduce our cooldowns, attacking the enemies, we're going to get Fortify. And Fortify is huge in arenas, absolutely huge. Also, we're going to take Protector's Strength. So, if you have a buff, heal for 10% more, which will be the entire fight. So, you can't skip out on that. And Balance. So I want to talk about haste. Haste is very important in arenas. It's going to help you escape. It's going to help you get to your teammates. It's going to help you, um, you know, run away when you need it. So it's it's definitely a, a good thing to have, and it's going to help quite a bit. And then we take protect. Or no, we already went over that. We're going to also take inspire. Uh, stamina is huge. I can't overstate that. It is huge. If you don't have stamina, you're dead. If you're not dodging you're dead so you've got to have stamina and this is just going to help your teammates whenever you hit them with the uh, lights embrace so that's it for the life staff build and we're going to go to the warhammer now i've tried the ice gauntlet um, and i'll probably be doing a video with that because ice shower with unending thaw and also the uh entombed or the ice block that is a lifesaver but 
with these DPS players that come in here and try to kill you, I mean, they just bust through your uh, entomb like like it's nothing. You know, it's it's so it it helps, but it doesn't. Um, I always end up coming back to Hammer every time. Hammer is just a CC monster, and CC will rule the arenas. If you are CC'd, you are gonna die. Pretty simple. So, um, just gonna go over a couple of these abilities really quick. So, Wrecking Ball is gonna flatten the enemy, so they're gonna, it's gonna knock them down. Usually, what I'll do is I'll hit them with the Shockwave, I'll hit them with Wrecking Ball, and then I'll hit them with the Heavy Attack. Um, clear out. I use that when obviously when the enemies are on top of me. It is so much fun watching them all fly off, especially if you have repulsing clear out. It's probably one of the funnest abilities in the game, but I use it to get the people off me self uh, peel, if you will. You know, if you're playing and you guys have a healer on your team, you've got to peel for your healer, meaning you've got to get those bad guys off of your healer because they're going to be on your healer the entire time if they know what they're doing. So clear out's uh, really good for, you know, getting them off you. It really helps a ton. Um, the only other thing I would use maybe, I mean, these two are must-haves in my opinion. Um, I might swap out clear out for Path of Destiny. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more, but again, I just go to clear out, back to clear out every time. This is, uh, like I said, great, great ability for arenas. So on the Juggernaut tree, now, um, just generally speaking, we're not going with the hammer for damage, not whatsoever. So I don't take any damaging abilities or uh, perks if I can help it. Everything's based around CC, cooldown reduction, stuff like that. But, you know, in the Juggernaut tree, we have to have a couple things to get to Wrecking Ball. So I chose Epitome of Bonk, Increase Armor Penetration for all heavy and light attacks, and Exhaustive Attacks. Um, so every Warhammer ability, meaning, you know, Clear Out, Shockwave, Wrecking Ball, they are going to uh, reduce their stamina regeneration. So that's actually pretty big. And then quick recovery, heavy attacks uh, will reduce cooldowns by 7% if you hit the heavy attacks. And the reason I grab this is because uh, whenever I flatten or shockwave, I always end up doing a heavy attack right after, get some extra damage in. Um, so that's why we're, you know, we're going with that. Cooldown reduction is going to be huge. And in the crowd crusher tree, we're going to take out numbered because uh, we're always going to be outnumbered. And we're that means we're going to get 10% more damage mitigation so that's always great um haste or no i'm sorry guard to sprint that's going to give us uh, extra damage reduction when we're sprinting and acceleration reduce warhammer cooldowns by seven percent when using light attacks against targets with an active debuff we're gonna everybody's gonna be uh gonna have an active debuff pretty much the entire fight so that's gonna be another thing we like and then facilitated expedition after hitting a target with an active debuff again pretty much everybody you're going to gain haste. Haste is very, very good in arenas. And then prevailing spirit, regain 35% of damage dealt as health. So life steal when using a crowd crusher ability. And our crowd crusher abilities are these two, and we're going to be using them all the time. And then the last thing I get, aftershock. So whenever somebody's affected by crowd control, which is, again, going to be pretty much the whole time, they're going to be slowed by 20%. So great, great ability. And that's it for the build, guys. All right, now as far as stats, before you guys start the flaming, hear me out. When you go in there with light as a healer, you're going to be pumping out some pretty good heals. All right. So with that being said, you can really afford to play around with the stats. You don't absolutely have to hit 300. When you hit that 300 mark, you know, it's a it's a mana thing. So when your mana hits 15 or less, gain 200% mana regen for 10 seconds. You know what? You're going to be popping mana pots the whole time anyway. It's going to pretty much be on cooldown. So mana regeneration isn't really an issue for me. <clears throat> what is an issue for me is survival. And with a small amount of constitution, it is really tough to survive. So I use as much constitution as I can. So I've been really enjoying 250 and 250. Or, you know, as much as you can get. Um, it's, it's helped quite a bit. It's helping with survivability big time. And I still have plenty of power, you know, in my heals to keep people alive. So if you don't want to go with the 250, 250, then go with 300, 200. That's a perfectly viable option. Um, I've actually spent most of the time with 300, 200. But yeah, 250 and, two, you know, 50 constitution is a big help. Especially because you get more damage reduction you know, now at full health, I mean, you're going to be at full health a lot. You are. You're going to be standing in your heels. You're going to be in sacred. 
Um, so you're going to have 60% damage reduction quite a bit. So this is a very, very good milestone to hit. And I mean, all the other ones are great too. You know, 20% increase to armor, 10% um, reduction in critical damage, you know, just like having extra resilience. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I've been going with. 250, 250, it's plenty of healing and it's been working out pretty well for me. So that's the stats that I use. So when it comes to items and gear, this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to show you guys. Well, let me show, start with the weapon. So uh, Will of the Ancients is an amazing weapon. It's the best in slot, in my opinion. It's got the two best perks in the game for uh, any healer, Blessed and Refreshing Move. If you don't have Will of the Ancients, go to Laz, run it over and over and over until you get it. It is amazing. Now, there's other um, you know weapons out there that have Blessed and Refreshing Move and maybe another you know good third perk. Now, Refreshing as a third perk, just best in slot, in my opinion. Now, as far as your hammer, um, I would just find any hammer that has con and focus or just focus or just con or focus con. Any of those variations will work. And just make sure you have a good weapon perk like um, Sundering Shockwave. Uh, if you're using Path of Destiny, Leeching Path of Destiny. But the main thing is just, you know, have your focus or your con because you're not using the hammer for damage. You're using the hammer for CC. And having a weapon perk that goes with any of your CC skills is going to be really, really good. So I wouldn't focus too much on the other perks um, unless you can find something good, you know, like refreshing would be good while you have the hammer out. But remember, most of the time, you're just going to have your life staff out. So the perks on the hammer really aren't going to matter that much unless it's got a weapon perk on it, which will be amazing. Now, as far as all the other perks that you want on your gear, um, let me just go over really quick. You're going to want to have a light helmet, a medium chest, a light glove, light legs, light boots. That is the ideal light loadout that you're going to be using. Now, I'm actually going to show you guys some examples of some best in slot or close to best in slot gear for your, you know, your necklaces, your jewelry and your armor. And then I'm going to list all the top perks that you want to get. Um, there isn't really a set best in slot piece for every single piece. So I'm just going to go over the top perks in order, in my opinion, and what I'm trying to use, you know, on the PTR, because that's the only place you can do arenas right now is the PTR. So starting with number one, it's going to be resilient. Resilient is going to be the best perk you can get your hands on for PVP because it's going to reduce the amount of crit damage you take. After resilient, I would go next would be uh, freedom. Freedom with all five pieces gives you a significant bonus. Now, some people might say eh, not so much, but right now the meta is definitely freedom. However, um, there are some new perks in the game that are going to be pretty amazing. For example, shirking healing. Anytime you dodge through an attack, you can heal. And stacking that up five times would be absolutely crazy. Um, now, I haven't been able to test that because I don't have five pieces of shirking healing, but I imagine it's going to be pretty good. And after the arenas are released and we start getting more of this gear, I'm going to be doing an updated video. But for right now, for people that just want to jump in there and, you know, see what they can do, you know, this stuff is going to work. So resilient, freedom, and then either refreshing, refreshing evasion, elemental or physical aversion are really good. I still put, you know, CD cooldown reduction at the top, but physical aversion, elemental aversion is great. Um, now, when I say refreshing, I mean refreshing, refreshing evasion, or even refreshing ward, because as a healer, you're going to be getting hit a lot. So you're going to be getting a lot of cooldown if you have a bunch of refreshing ward and people are hitting you because they're going to be attacking you the whole time if they know what they're doing. Um, other great perks, like I said, Shirking Fortification, amazing. Physical and Elemental Aversion, pretty darn good. There's a bunch of good perks, but those are probably the top ones. And as far as your um, jewelry and stuff, the ones I listed here are going to be pretty much best in slot. So um, if you guys have any questions about anything further, you know, let me know. I do not have a full set of best in slot gear, so I'm not showing you guys my gear. I'm showing you what I wish I had and what you guys should be looking for. And this is all the gear that people are paying big, big bucks for, you know, in the live version of the game right now. All right, now the bread and butter of this video. So what I found to work the best is staying alive as a healer <laughs> i know that's obvious that goes without saying but the problem is and, and especially as people get more experienced in arenas they know that they need to kill the healer on the other team 
So you are going to have a giant target painted on your back for good reason. If the team that you're fighting doesn't really know what they're doing, it's not that much of a problem. But if they have any clue at all, they're going to go for the healer and it's just going to be a survival game. So with that being said, I know you're thinking, well, we should probably run heavy if it's just survival, you know, and I'm going to play around with it. I'm going to go back in there, get some more experience in as heavy. But from what I've seen and from what I've tested, you know, you don't have mobility. It's even easier for them to kill you, in my opinion, because for weak heals, you don't have a good dodge and it's just too easy to CC you and, and kill you. So a heavy for me wasn't and isn't a viable option. If they do something about that and, you know, give us back our instant lights embrace and, you know, more healing and, and stop it with all these nerfs, I would definitely look into heavy healing, you know, like a paladin build. But right now it's just not happening. There's no way. Um, and I've tried and tried and tried and it just, just not happening. Like I said, so it's really a survival game. You are going to have the enemy team on you hundred percent of the time. Again, if they know what they're doing. So what you have to do is just try to survive and let your team attack the players while they're attacking you. It's a survival game. So if you can survive and give your team time to, um, you know, kill the enemy as they're trying to kill you, then you have a very good chance of winning. And that's what I did. Just try to survive. Uh, as far as the healing goes, I would just, you know, as soon as you get in there, as soon as you start taking damage, pop a sacred ground. The, the key to staying alive as a healer is always being in your sacred ground. It goes without saying, but I'll, I'll just mention it anyway. When you're in your sacred ground, all the healing that you receive, self-healing, pots, everything is going to be increased by 50%. So if you're trying to heal and you're not in sacred ground, you're using, um, you're losing half of your healing. It is insane. So if you have enemies on you, make sure you're in the sacred ground. If you don't have enemies on you, make sure your sacred ground is on your teammates. Another thing that you're going to want to try to do is really bait out those CC abilities. So if you see somebody with a hammer, if you see somebody with a great ax, um, don't just start dodging right away. Save your stamina, save your stamina and those dodges for the very last second. You'll see me on here a lot, of, you know, dodging the uh, the attacks. I'm not just rolling around randomly. I'm waiting for those attacks and purposely, you know, waiting at the right moment to dodge at the very last second so that I can bait out their CC. Once their CC is gone, um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. But if they get you caught, if you get caught, it's, it's pretty much game over. So you got to be really careful with that. Um, a lot of it is really, you know, stamina management when it comes to being a healer. You gotta you gotta play that mana or that stamina game. Once you're out of stamina, you are a sitting duck and it's game over. Now with these new changes to Lights Embrace, what they're doing is they're adding, you know, it's like a second cast or like a half a second or something. It's longer than what it was before. So when you are doing your Lights Embrace, you wanna be walking towards your sacred ground. You don't wanna use Lights Embrace on yourself unless you're in sacred ground because it is gonna do dog crap you know healing so what i've been doing is you know if, if i'm near a sacred ground i will start casting lights and brace before i get to the sacred ground and make sure it hits as soon as i'm in it um, if you don't and you just cast you know lights and brace it, it really doesn't do very much healing at all all right so i want to talk about really quick why i take splash of light instead of beacon so in PVE, in dungeons, in mutations, when you've got five people, they're all stacked up together or four people, um, and you put down a sacred, a beacon, and a orb of protection, that is so much healing in one spot, it is insane. But that situation, that scenario does not apply here, does not happen in arenas. Nobody's gonna be standing still. Nobody's gonna just be standing still, just attacking, uh, you know, standing in all three of these AOE heals. So without, you know, having beacon, if you have beacon by itself, it's just, it's not that much healing. Um, I think splash of light is much better, you know, and, and if you miss your beacon, that's a long cooldown and a wasted heal. Uh, and, and you know what I've noticed in arenas, uh, your teammates don't really focus too much on staying in your sacred ground or your beacon if you put it down and you know, they, they can't, it's hard. You're going to be dodging around. You can't, you know, constantly stay in heals. So splash of light you know, fixes all those issues. You know, it's gonna hit everybody 100% of the time. 
if you're within range and chances are you're going to be in range because this is a small arena uh, especially when the fire circle starts closing in splash of light is just so much better in my opinion for this situation and as far as you know sacred ground and lights embrace you can't get rid of those those are must-haves so the only other option is splash of light beacon or orb of protection and orb of protection i just don't really think it has a spot in pvp right now or not in pvp in arena specifically in wars and stuff it's amazing don't get me wrong it is amazing but in here people just aren't really clumped together that much there's separate fights going on there shouldn't be everybody should focus one person but it just doesn't happen all the time so that's why i choose splash of light over beacon and orb of protection so the last thing i want to talk about is why i chose the warhammer and don't get me wrong there's plenty of other great options out there but the warhammer has given me the most success uh, the most CC and you know like I said before CC is a, quite a big deal in arenas so uh, not really a lot to say about how to use it I mean it's pretty self-explanatory but uh, you know in a nutshell you know if uh, if you have enemies on you and you need to get them off of you clear out you don't want to use clear out at the wrong time because sometimes it could actually be advantageous for the enemy team so if you're uh, teammates are attacking somebody and you use clear out you're actually doing the enemy a favor by knocking them away from your teammates and giving them an escape uh, the only time i ever use clear out is when i'm about to die or they're all three of them are on me attacking me i can't do anything and that gets them off you know if you hit them with it so that's the main or only time i really use clear out you've got to be careful with it it can actually help the other team uh, as far as shockwave goes my usual you know combo if i hit him with shockwave i'll follow up immediately with um the wrecking ball so i could flatten him again and kind of cc chain them it's very very useful also wrecking ball kind of has a, a leap to it so it can you know close a little bit of a gap and you know that helps too um, other than that yeah you just try to you just got to cc them as much as you can and with those three abilities you're, there's plenty of it so that's going to pretty much wrap up this video uh, if anybody has any comments, any suggestions, maybe different abilities, different perks, uh, different build ideas, let me know. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. I plan on doing a, a lot of other builds, going to do some DPS builds and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. It's going to be a blast. You guys are going to love arenas. So that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I hope you all have a great day. Take it easy.